All right, guys, welcome to uh, data ingestion strategies using AWS Glue and Kinesis. So today we're diving into a crucial aspect of modern data architecture, which is data ingestion strategy. And we will be talking uh, about your AWS Glue and Amazon Kinesis services. You know, as businesses generate and collect more data than ever before, the ability to efficiently ingest process and analyze this data has become paramount for success. So in this lecture, let's explore how AWS Glue and Amazon Kinesis serve as powerful tools in your data ingestion toolkit. All right. And let's examine when and how to use each service. And you know, by the end of this session, you will have a comprehensive understanding of implementing effective data ingestion strategies. So let's start by understanding what data ingestion really means, right? At its core, data ingestion is the process of obtaining and importing data for immediate use or storage in a database. Uh, think of it as building the pipelines for that transport data from various sources to where it needs to go, right? So, you know, we encounter numerous data sources in our lives, right? The, the, these include primary sources like user interactions on, uh, on, our, on your website or mobile app, right? And secondary sources such as databases, right? Amazon S3 buckets uh, and others like, you know, Amazon EBS volumes. Each of these sources has its own characteristics and requirements, okay? So when we talk about data ingestion jobs, they typically fall into two main categories, batch load and streaming, okay? So batch processing involves collecting data over time and processing it in chunks, okay? While streaming handles data in real time as it arrives, all right? And, and understanding these, these job styles is crucial for designing effective data ingestion strategies in your AWS uh, cloud, right? So let's first look at AWS Glue, right? This is an Amazon's serverless extract, transform, load, or ETL service that makes it easier to prepare and load your data for analytics. Think of AWS Glue as your data catalyst, right? It helps you discover, prepare, and combine data for, for various downstream use. All right, let's, let's break down the components. So AWS Glue is composed of multiple components. I mean, composed of <laughs> yeah, that facilitates data integration. So ETL, extract, transform, load processes, and data cataloging are among them. So these components work together to help users discover, prepare, and integrate data for analytics, for machine learning, and and app dev, right? So Key components of, of Glue would be AWS Glue Data Catalog. So this is a central metadata repository that restores structural and operational metadata for all your data assets. So it serves as a single source of truth for data discovery and, and it's compatible with Apache Hive Metastone. You can use AWS Glue crawlers to automatically infer schemas and update the data catalog. Right. So the second service is AWS Glue ETL or Extract, Transform, and Load. And this service provides the capabilities to, to transform data. Okay. It allows you to create, run, and monitor ETL jobs using a managed Spark environment. Okay. It supports Python and Scala and, and, and provides libraries for common data transformation tasks. Right? So AWS Glue can be used to cleanse data. AWS do. Glue can connect to a PostgreSQL database instance and ingest tables into Amazon S3, all right? So I hope uh, you would look up AWS Glue ETL services a bit and Data Glue, Data Catalog and Crawlers and Data Brew because you would see uh, these concepts tested, you would be tested on these concepts in your exam, right? So AWS Glue crawlers, I mean, these automatically discover the schema of your data stored in data lakes and other data stores, okay? Yeah. 
uh, crawlers connect to your data stores, analyze the data, extract schemas, and store the metadata in AWS Glue uh, data catalog. Okay. Now there's another service called Data Brew. So AWS Glue Data Brew. This is an identify. This can identify and redact personally identifiable information or PII. So extremely important, if, especially if you have a PII data, if you want to redact it. It can also be used to read data in a PostgreSQL database and perform data prep and, and then use Amazon SageMaker Studio for prediction and modeling. But right, so when we talk about Amazon SageMaker, we'll mention how Data Brew can be, can be a complementary service there. Then AWS, AWS Glue Interactive Sessions, I mean, this is used for data preparation and workflows, uh, Glue workflows can be used to perform data transformation, right? So <clears throat> Glue int integrates with other AWS services, right? Like I said, S3, Kinesis, Redshift, Athena, SageMaker, and to provide a comprehensive data integration and an and, and, and analytic solution. It is triggered by AWS Lambda or CloudWatch events. And also Glue can be used with Amazon Forecast, right? So let's look at a practical example. Suppose you need to ingest data from a database into S3. So uh, how would you do that, right? First, you would use AWS Glue to establish a connection to your database through a VPN. Then you would set up the ingestion process to transform tables to S3. And if needed, right, you can use PySpark job to remove sensitive data during the transfer. All right, so I hope you have you have a good idea or or a, some idea of what AWS Glue is, and you will continue to look into it because you are not only tested, but it's a great product that you would be you should be using when you are working as an AI practitioner. Okay. So Amazon Kines Kinesis is a right. It's a it's a it's, a, it's a powerhouse for real time data streaming and processing. So imagine Kinesis as a massive river system, constantly flowing with data that needs to be captured, processed, and analyzed in a real time. So let's break down the three main services within Kinesis family. First, we have Kinesis data streams. This service is your go-to solution, right? When you need a complete control over your streaming applications. Picture it as, as a high-speed high highway with multiple lanes, each lane representing a, sh a shard that can handle up to a thousand records per, per record and, and one MB per second of data, right? So you, you, you will want to use data streams when you need to write custom, you know, custom, custom consumers or when you have a specific requirements that go beyond the Kinesis data firehouse support, firehouse support. In our, in our uh, study here, we don't need to, we don't need to uh, think about scaling as much in our demos, of course, right? But know that you can actually uh, customize Kinesis for your own, uh, you know, when you, when you have your own requirements that go beyond what Firehose supports. Next is uh, Kinesis uh, Data Firehose, right? So think of this as your automated delivery service for streaming data. It is it is designed to make your life easier by automatically delivering data to you know to popular destinations like S3, Redshift, Open Search Service, and Splunk. I mean, what's really convenient about Firehose is that it handles shard management for you. You can you can configure it to buffer data based on size or time period and even perform transformations using Lambda functions before the data reaches its destination. Right? And the third service is Kinesis Data Analytics, which is like having a real-time data analytics analyst working 24-7. It allows you to analyze streaming data using SQL, making it perfect for scenarios like real-time anomaly detection, or transforming the most recent data in the data before inference, right? So let's walk through a practical example. Uh, example, okay? 
imagine you are collecting sensor data from thousands of IoT devices. Here is a, how you might set up your Kinesis pipeline. Number one, you will use Kinesis data streams to ingest the raw sensor data. Apply Kinesis data analytics to perform real-time analysis. Perhaps detecting anomalies of, or, or cultivating moving averages. Right, right. Finally, use Kinesis data firehose to store the process data in S3 for long-term storage and, and further analysis. So a key point to remember is the rate limit, right? Thousand records per second per shard with a data limit of one MB per second. When designing your streaming architecture, these numbers will be crucial for you for, for determining how many shards you actually need. Okay. All right, so now that we have covered both AWS Glue and Kinesis in, DA, in a high level, let's, do, let's just discuss how to choose between them. And uh, this is a uh, this decision is similar to choosing between a cargo ship and a speedboat, right? Each has its own purpose. For batch processing, when you are dealing with large chunks of data that you don't require immediate processing, AWS Glue is your friend. It's perfect for scenarios like nightly data warehouse updates or weekly analytics processing. On the other hand, if you need real time or near real time processing. Think live dashboards or immediate fraud detection, right? Kinesis is your go-to solution. The key different, the differentiator here is latency requirements. So consider data volume as well, right? While both services can handle large data volume amounts of data, they can do so differently. So Glue is optimized for processing large batches efficiently, right? And Kinesis excels and handling continuous streams of data with high throughput. So when it comes to transformation capabilities, you know, Glue offers comprehensive ETL capabilities for complex transformation, right? And Kinesis Data Firehose can perform basic transformation and format conversion on the fly. So remember, it's doing it on the fly, okay? So what are the practical implications, right? Let's, let's Put this all together with a real world scenario. Imagine you're working with a news website that wants to build a real time article recommendation system based on user behavior. So here's how you would implement it. You'll use Kinesis data streams to collect click stream data in real time as users browse articles. Okay. You will and you will implement data analytics to transform this data and, and perform real time analytics of reading patterns uh, and and use can and then use Kinesis data file hose to store the process data in S3 for training recommendation models right so the setup setup process would require you to configure your Kinesis data streams right with appropriate number of shards based on your traffic uh, you'll set up Kinesis data analytics applications with SQL queries for real time processing and you'll configure Kinesis data wire host to deliver to deliver to S3 with appropriate buffering settings. So let's talk about some of the best practices, all right? So, so for, AW, for AWS Glue, you should understand the strategies to opt optimize the storage and query performance, right? You should, of course, consider serverless options to reduce operational overhead and choose appropriate file formats, you know, Parquet of often outperform CSV for analytical workloads, right? So that may be one of the things that you would consider. For Kinesis, select the appropriate Kinesis service based on your specific use case, right? Use Kinesis data firehose when possible to reduce management overhead. Okay. And you can leverage Lambda functions for any stream transformation when needed. What about cost, right? Understanding the pricing implications of different storage formats is extremely important, right? You should know and you should consider reserved capacity for predictable workloads, right? Use spot instances where appropriate to reduce costs. I mean, these are all best practices across all AWS services that you would be used, right? So 
As we wrap up today's session, let's recap the key points we have covered. We explored the fundamental differences between glue and kinesis. Understand, we talked about why glue excels in, in batch processing and complex transformation, while kinesis is your go-to solution for real-time streaming data. Okay. Remember, there is no one-size-fits-all solution in data ingestion. The choice between a glue and kinesis depends on your specific use case. You should also consider factors like data volume, latency requirements, and transformation needs. So I encourage you all to explore the AWS documentation further and to start experimenting with these services. The hands-on experience will help you solidify the concepts we have discussed today. Thank you for paying attention. I'll see you in the next session.